Today, we are exploring something that could define our entire food system, lab-grown meat. Imagine a world where meat isn't raised on farms, but cultured in a lab. It might sound futuristic, maybe even a little strange, but lab-grown meat is here, and it could revolutionize our approach to food, sustainability, and ethic. And don't worry, I'm not about to taste test any here. This is all about visuals, thanks to the magic of editing. But really, imagine being able to enjoy a burger or a steak without needing to raise or slaughter animals. That's the vision behind lab-grown meat. Today, we're diving into what makes lab-grown meat so fascinating. From the science behind how it's made to why it could be a game-changer for the planet. This tech has enormous potential. Traditional meat production is one of the biggest contributors to greenhouse gas emissions, deforestation, and water use. Lab-grown meat offers a solution that could reduce environmental impact while letting us keep enjoying our favorite foods. But the road isn't easy. There are challenges like production costs, questions around taste and texture, and convincing people that lab-made meat is as good as the real thing. So if you're curious about whether lab-grown meat could truly be the future of food, stick around. We're in for a fascinating journey. Let's dive in and see if lab-grown meat is ready to reshape what's on our plate. Now, let's look at why there is such a push for meat alternatives, including lab-grown meat. Traditional meat production has a huge impact on our planet, from greenhouse gas emissions to deforestation and water consumption. The meat industry alone is responsible for around 15% of global emissions. That's more than all the cars, planes, and trains combined. There's the issue of deforestation. To meet the demand for meat, huge areas of forests are cleared to make way for livestock and the crops that feed them. This leads to habitat loss for wildlife, reducing biodiversity and impacting ecosystems. Not to mention, it's a major factor behind the decline of wild forests like the Amazon. And if you think about it, producing one burger takes about 660 gallons of water. That's like taking charity showers. It, it's clear our current approach to meat production isn't exactly sustainable. Then there is the ethical side. Factory farming practices raise serious concerns about animal welfare. Millions of animals are kept in confined spaces, often with limited access to fresh air, sunlight, or the ability to engage in natural behaviors. This setup isn't just hard on humans. It also increases the risk of disease transmission, which can lead to antibiotic resistance. Lab-grown meat, in theory, addresses these issues by creating meat without the need to raise or slaughter animals. So lab-grown meat and other meat alternatives aim to solve a lot of these problems. By producing meat in a lab, we could cut down on emissions, reducing water use, preventing deforestation, and eliminate the need for factory farms. This could be a game-changer for the planet and animal welfare. But this isn't just about replacing traditional meat for environmental or ethical reasons. It's also about creating a sustainable food supply for a growing population. By 2050, the world's population is expected to hit nearly 10 billion, and the demand for meat will keep rising. Finding alternative ways to produce protein is essential if you want to meet that demand without further harming the planet. All right, so lab-grown meat isn't the only alternative to traditional meat. There are already a few options on the market, and each one is bringing something different to the table. First up, we have plant-based meats. You've probably seen these in your local grocery store or on restaurant menus. Brands like Beyond Meat and Hustle Foods have taken the world by a storm, creating burgers, sausages, and even chicken that look, cook, and taste pretty close to real meat. Plant-based meats are primarily made from ingredients like soy, peas, and wheat. We added flavors, fats, and textures to mimic the taste and feel of animal meat. There are great options if you're looking to cut down on meat consumption without giving up the meat experience. Plus, they come with some serious benefits, lower carbon footprint, less water usage, and of course, no animal involved. But if you've tried these, you know that why they're close to the real thing, they're not quite the same. Some people love them, others, not so much. It's kind of like comparing sparkling water to soda. Similar, but, you know, it's not the same. Then there's fungi-based meat, like corn. This is a bit different because it's made from mycoprotein, which is dry from fungi. 
Mycoprotein has naturally meat-like texture, and it's packed with protein, making it a popular alternative in Europe and parts of the U.S. It's co-friendly and doesn't require the large-scale agriculture that even plant-based protein sometimes need. Finally, we have to start off today's topic, lab-grown meat or cultured meat. Unlike plant or phycobased options, lab-grown meat is actual animal tissue, just produced in a lab instead of on a farm. Scientists start with a small sample of animal cells and grow them in a nutrient-rich environment, allowing the cell to multiply and form muscle tissue. The result, real meat, minus the animal fat. Lab-grown meat offers the closest taste and texture to conventional meat, since technically it's meat. But unlike the plant-based and fungi options, lab-grown meat is still new, expensive, and not widely available. Companies are working hard to scale up production and bring the costs down, but it will be a while before you see lab-grown burgers at your local diner. So from plant-based and fungi-based to lab-grown, there's a range of options for those looking to cut down on traditional meats. Each has its pros and cons, but together, they're paving the way for a more sustainable food future. All right, let's get into the science of lab-grown meat. How exactly do you grow meat in a lab? It all starts with a small sample of animal cell, usually muscle cell, since that's what we are trying to replicate. Scientists take a biopsy from a live animal, which can be a cow, chicken, or even fish. The animal doesn't need to be harmed, making this a more ethical alternative from the start. Once they've got the cell, they place them in a nutrient-rich environment called a culture medium. Think of it as the petri dishes version of a five-star buffet. The culture medium is filled with everything the cell needs to grow and multiply, like proteins, vitamins, and minerals. In this control environment, the cells begin to divide and form muscle tissue, much like they would in a real animal's body. And no, this isn't your standard backyard barbecue prep. It's more like a sci-fi garden where you're growing muscle tissue. And the cells continue to grow. They start farming the fibrous layer texture that gives meat the bite and chew. To help the tissue develop texture, some labs use scaffolding, a kind of framework that cells can grow around, mimicking how muscle grows in an animal. This gives lab-grown meat its familiar texture, making it feel more like a traditional cut of meat, rather than mushy or soft. Scientists can even control the fat content by adding fat cells during the process, tailoring the taste and mouthfeel to be as close to natural meat as possible. The entire process takes a few weeks. Compared to the months or even years it takes to raise animals for a slaughter. And since it's all done in a lab, there is no need for antibiotics, which are commonly used in livestock farming to prevent disease. This means lab grown meat could potentially be healthier, as well as being free of contaminants like bacteria that could be found in traditional meat. So, lab grown meat is created through a mix of cell culture, nutrient media, and careful design to replicate the taste and texture of real meat. It's an impressive process that combines biotechnology and food science, aiming to bring us real meat without the need for traditional animal farming. Now, why lab grown meat sounds promising? There are a few significant hurdles standing in the way of it becoming mainstream. Let's start with cost. Right now, producing lab grown meat was expensive, like really expensive. When the first lab grown burger was made back in 2013, it cost around $330. Costs have dropped since then, but it's still nowhere near affordable for the average consumer. Companies are working to bring these costs down by improving efficiency, scaling up production, and finding cheaper ingredients for the culture medium. But we're still looking at a long journey. Until the price is completely with traditional meat, lab-grown options are likely to stay out of reach for most people. Then there is the issue of taste and texture. Let's be honest. If lab-grown meat doesn't taste right, people aren't going to buy it. Scientists have made progress replicating the flavor and mouthfeel of meat. By getting it to perfectly mimic a juicy steak or crispy fried chicken is no easy feat. After all, food is not just about nutrient. It's about the experience. Next, we have consumer skepticism. A lot of people are hesitant about the idea of eating meat grown in a lab, with concerns ranging from food safety to the simple egg factor. Changing public perception is crucial if lab-grown meat is going to become a real alternative on supermarket shelves. Companies and scientists will need to educate people about the benefits and safety of lab-grown meat to overcome these psychological barriers. And let's not forget the regulatory challenges. 
that grown meat is still so new that governments are figuring out how to classify and regulate it. In some countries, there aren't even clear guidelines on how it can be sold or labeled, which complicates efforts to bring it to market. Navigating these regulatory hurdles is essential for scaling production and achieving widespread adoption. So while lab-grown meat has enormous potential, these challenges, high costs, taste hurdles, consumer acceptance, and regulatory obstacles are keeping it from becoming a mainstream option just yet. It's a complex journey, but companies are pushing forward to make lab-grown meat a viable choice in the future. Let's talk about the egg factor. Lab-grown meat has a unique hurdle, public perception. For, for many, the idea of eating meat grown in a lab just feels unnatural, even though the science behind it is solid. Convincing people to embrace meat that didn't come from an animal on a farm is a big challenge. It's like trying to convince someone to swap grandma's homemade pie for a pie made by a robot. It might taste the same, but there's something about the process that just feels different. Beyond that, there are ethical questions. Lab-grown meat promises to eliminate the need for slaughtering animals, which is a win for animal welfare advocates. However, some people question whether creating animal cells in a lab crosses ethical lines or leads to a slippery slope of bioengineering that could become problematic in other areas. It raises questions like, where do we draw the line with science and food? There's also the concern of accessibility. Right now, lab-grown meat is expensive, and as with any new technology, there is the risk it could become something only accessible to a privileged few. This could create a divide between those who can afford clean meat and those who rely on traditional meat sources, which would undermine the sustainability and ethical goals of lab-grown meat. So while lab-grown meat has clear benefits, public acceptance and ethical considerations are real obstacles. Overcoming the egg factor and addressing concerns about equity and bioethics will be key if lab-grown meat is going to gain the acceptance it needs to become a mainstream food source. So is lab-grown meat really the future of food? It's clear that lab-grown meat has huge potential. From reducing our environment impact and cutting down on animal farming to provide a more ethical food source, this technology could completely change how we think about and consume meat. Imagine a world where enjoying a burger doesn't contribute to deforestation or water waste. That's pretty revolutionary, but we are not there yet. The cost of production, taste, and texture improvements and overcoming public skepticism are still big hurdles. Right now, lab grown meat is still in its early stages, more of a niche innovation than a widespread solution. And the regulatory challenges mean it will be a while before lab grown options become common in grocery stores or on restaurant menus. It's like we have the blueprint for the meat of the future, but it's going to take some time and a lot of fine tuning to get it onto everyone's plates. And let's be real. If you're someone who loves a good steak, it might take some serious convincing to give up that familiar season for lab-grown options. But for generation growing more concerned about sustainability and ethical food sources, lab-grown meat is an exciting possibility. In the end, lab grown meat is a work in progress with a big vision to provide real meat without the downsides of traditional farming. As the technology advances and companies work on scaling it up, we could be looking at a future where lab grown meat is just as accessible and familiar as any other option. It's a shift that could redefine food production in the coming years. Thanks for joining me on this look into lab grown meat. If this video gave you some food for thought, pun intended, don't forget to give it a thumbs up, subscribe, and hit that notification bell for more deep dives into the future of food and tech. And let me know in the comments, would you try lab-grown meat? Or does the idea still make you a little squeamish? Let's get this conversation going, and I will see you in the next video.